Hi everyone, my name is Gordon and I'm one of the new employees at Grid. This is going to be one of my first e-bike conversions. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install an SX2 rear geared hub motor. This is a relatively simple installation and this motor absolutely requires a torque arm to avoid the axle spinning out on the dropouts. So for this kit installation, you will need tire levers to get your tire and tube from your original wheel to the new wheel. You'll need an adjustable wrench to tighten the axle nuts. A 10 millimeter wrench would be helpful to reorient the axle in the dropouts. And a file may also be needed if your dropouts are slightly too small. The first step is to remove the original wheel off the bike. So right now this is rim brake, so you just have to undo this bracket and the wheel should come off. This also has a quick release on it, so it comes off very easily. The second step is to remove the tire and the tube from the old wheel and putting it onto the new wheel. You should make sure the tire is deflated all the way so it makes taking off the tire and the tube easier. The third step is to transfer the tire and the tube onto your new wheel. Some tires have a directional tread, so make sure you install the tire on the right way around. If you're not sure which way that is, usually there's an arrow on the sidewall indicating the direction. Or, if it doesn't have an arrow, you can just copy the other wheel. This is the rear cassette that's already installed on it. If you buy a cassette with our hub motor, we'll do the installation for you so it comes exactly like you see here. But if you want to install your own cassette, then you can do that with the standard lock ring. We're now ready to install the wheel onto the bike. This is the special locking washer, and you must make sure it's on the inside of the dropout and this regular washer and nut will be on the outside of the dropout. Sometimes your dropout spacing may be too tight and the axle won't go all the way down. If that is the case, we'll have to take it out and take a file and file away a little bit of the dropout. This axle is now fully seated. Make sure you file a little at a time and test it and file again as necessary. A common mistake is that people have all the washers on the outside of the dropout. Make sure this locking washer is on the inside. A 10 millimeter wrench may be helpful for you to orient the axle the correct way. Even though the SX2 motor is small in size, it still packs a lot of torque and there's a risk for the axles to spin out in the dropouts, especially with bikes with aluminum dropouts. So we'll be installing the Torque Arm version 4. Based on the geometry of the bike we have today, we're going to be installing it this way. This bike frame does not have lawyer lips, so we do not need a washer to space it out since this is flat. If your bike does have lawyer lips on the dropout, make sure you have an additional spacer so the Torque Arm can lie flush against the spacer. Make sure the arm is on the inside of the Torque plate to be installed like so. Now that you have everything loosely on, you want to make sure you tighten all the nuts very, very tightly. The first one we're going to tighten is this screw. Now that the torque arm is installed, all that's left to do is to install the axle nuts and tighten them. When you tighten them, you have to make sure the axle is fully seated in the dropout. And one way to do that is to put your weight on it as you're tightening it. These axle nuts need to be very tight, around 40 to 50 newton meters of force. One of the nice things about the SX2 hub motors is that they come with the very nice rubber axle caps. 
so you can slide them in and it actually protects the wires coming out and gives the bike a clean look and finish. And that concludes the installation of a rear SX2 hub motor.